Well, beloved in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In God's Word today that the Holy Spirit has caused to be recorded, we'll see something quite extraordinary. You see, the words recorded in today's Scripture were spoken from Jesus. And within these words, we hear Jesus expressing an intense longing to fulfill his, his Father's salvation plan, even though it means he himself will suffer horribly in its fulfillment, dying nailed to the cross, for the sins of the entire world. But there's more. Because what Jesus also makes clear is that there is no compromise to be found for anyone when it comes to trusting in Him alone to be saved. And loved ones, because this reality is a true reality, there are only two choices in life. A person stands either with Jesus or stands in opposition against him. Today's reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12, verse 49 through verse 53. I would ask again if you're able to rise out of respect for the glorious Gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us now in its truth. Your words are truth. Thank you. Please be seated. Our gospel today begins with two emphatic statements from Jesus. And in order for us to fully understand this portion of God's Word, it's important for us to first understand these two statements because they are key to this entire lesson. You see, the Lord spoke these words in the manner in which He spoke them because of the intense feelings that were going on within His human nature, His human side. In other words, because Jesus is God in the flesh, he knows exactly why he came, and he knows exactly what lies ahead. Which means he fully recognized the magnitude of horror that his redemptive mission would bring. However, because of his great love for all people, Jesus, in his obedience to the Father, came on a rescue mission as our mediator, our substitute, our go-between. To live the perfect sinless life that you and I are supposed to live, but can never live on our own because of our imperfect sinful nature. Jesus came as our representative. He came to take our place as our sacrifice for our sin. And this is what Jesus was referring to when he said, I came to cast fire on the earth, but oh, how I wish that it were already kindled, and I have a baptism to be baptized with, but oh, how great is my distress until all is accomplished. When Jesus spoke these words, he was acknowledging that he recognized everything that lay ahead, and be, because of the sufferings his human side must endure for the sins of the world, he wished at this point in his ministry that everything was done, that everything was already finished. He longed for the time when he would suffer and die on the cross, being baptized in blood by the wrath that was poured out upon him, the beating, the stripes, the crown of thorns that were laid upon him in our place. Jesus longed for this to be completed, knowing the glorious eternal outcome of what his sufferings would mean for everyone who would believe and trust in him. 
However, at this point, his atoning work was not yet accomplished. The fire had not yet been kindled. It had not been lit. And his baptism of blood to be baptized with was still looming large before him. This fire of which the Lord speaks is the gospel. It's the message of the repentance of sin and the forgiveness of them in the name of Jesus. It's the good news of Christ's atoning death on the cross for the sins of the world. It's the message of the Bible that has for millennia caused much contention, dissension, and strife among people, bringing with it a fire of controversy which often results in fierce trials and conflicts for believers. But the cross, of course, is also the sweetest gospel. The cross is the basis of our salvation. Jesus taking our sin upon himself so that we are forgiven, we are absolved. We have eternal life in heaven. But that sweet gospel of the cross comes because there is such a tremendous need. And in order for us to appreciate that sweet gospel message, we must first recognize how serious our sin is and how helpless we are without Christ. And that is why, friends, the law of God, which shows our sin, is so important to hear and understand. It's important because before we can ever recognize and appreciate the blessed good news of the gospel, we must first understand how rotten and sinful we are. And this is the very reason that true preaching of the message of the cross, both the law and the gospel, causes such division in our world. You see, loved ones, the truthful preaching of the cross is at all times a spiritual fire that causes much division. It's a fire that has set the world ablaze and has caused a big split between those who believe in the truth of Christ's sacrificial death for sin and those who do not. It's a fire that will stir up many people. It's a cleansing fire that will eventually destroy all that is opposed. But the message of the cross is also an eternal burning flame, one that can permeate deep into the human heart with its glowing warmth revealing to us God's grace, mercy, and deliverance from sin. But Jesus knows that before he can kindle and cast this gospel fire upon the earth, he must first pass through a bloody baptism of crucifixion. And that is what makes what Christ says here so extraordinary. Because he knows what lies ahead, and he knows how certain his suffering experience will be Yet, he still longs for the cross, which is to crown his redemptive work in glory and transform the world. Jesus tells us, though, that this re redemptive transformation will split the world into two camps and cause much division. Luke 12, verse 51 reads, Jesus said, do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Now these words from Jesus are hard to swallow for many people because they sound so hateful and harsh, even uninviting. I mean, what kind of a loving Savior are we talking about here, Pastor? After all, isn't Jesus known as the Prince of Peace? Isn't his church the harbor of peace? It's greeting grace and peace to you. Wasn't it Jesus who said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you? Yep. Those are the words of Jesus, all right. Yet he himself tells us here, do not think that I have come to give peace on earth. No, emphatically, no, I tell you but rather division. So what in the wide world is going on here? 
Well, what we hear Jesus saying to his true and faithful followers is that they should expect conflict from the world when they are faithful to him and his word. Jesus is telling faithful Christians that the assignment we have, the one that runs throughout our entire lives to go out and make disciples by sharing his message of redemption and the forgiveness of sins, will not be easy. There will always be opposition to that message. You see, most people are strongly opposed to God's way of salvation because they are instead in harmony with the world and its sinful ways. That's why Jesus and his gospel causes a big split in the world. Because it's the message of the cross that separates those who believe its truth from those who, in their foolish rejection, are perishing because of it. The truth of the matter is, Jesus Christ is the most dividing personality that has ever walked this earth. Why? because of who he is, what he said, and what is taught about him. John 14, 6 reads, Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one will ever come to the Father except through me. And 1 John 2, verse 2 reads, he, Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins, the atoning, the mediator, the guy who took our place. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And 1 Timothy 2.5 reads, For there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. In other words, <laughs> Jesus is the only way to God and eternal life. So if you want to know God the Father, you must know him through Christ the Son. Because Jesus is the only one who offers the gift of eternal life to those who will believe and trust in him. Because when the chosen time in history had arrived, the time that was set by God, Christ, God himself in the flesh, came down from his heavenly throne to live among us as one of us. And he came with one purpose, friends. He came to take our sin, all of our sinful thoughts, our words, and our deeds into his sinless innocence. And then take upon himself the punishment that we deserved for that sin and nailed them all to the cross. Christ alone has absorbed the total judgment of God against all our sins. Because on that cross, God the Father laid the full force of his wrath on his own son so that you would never have to experience such a brutal eternal death. God brutalized his own son so that Christ's holy and precious blood would be poured out upon that cross for you so that you can have life and have it to the fullest. On that cross, Jesus received the full and complete penalty and punishment for the sins of the whole world with his perfect sacrifice for sin. And Jesus victoriously proclaimed for all the world that his sacrifice on the cross was sufficient when he rose so magnificently from that grave. And now he gloriously reigns in heaven and prepares a place for us to live with him in paradise forever. <laughs> and knowing this truth, every single Christian is able with great joy and confidence to declare before the whole world, my Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person. He has purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil. And he did this not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. Which means, loved ones, we who are unholy and unrighteous, we who are not worthy of such splendor, 
We receive from Jesus the forgiveness of our sins and thus receive the perfect holiness and righteousness of Christ our Savior. <clears throat> All is a free gift. What a deal. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It is freely given, wrapped up like a beautifully hand-signed package just for you. Purely because of God's tremendous love for you. You know, in understanding this, understanding the simplicity of the gospel, you would think that this glorious message of true and lasting peace with God would unite and bring families together. But it doesn't. Instead, it oftentimes causes a big split. You see, because of our sinful nature and our desire to live for self and not for God, basically to do things our own way. This rebellious attitude can and does separate us from the love of Christ and the peace he alone offers. And this is a problem, isn't it? In fact, this has always been a problem for the world because people throughout the ages have devised and concocted many different ways to come to God. And because of this, this teaching from Jesus will always be an uncomfortable and inconvenient truth, one that will disturb, one that will disrupt, one that will split apart and divide even the most close-knit family. Luke 12, 51 through 53 reads, Jesus again said, Do you think that I have come to give peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. What Jesus is describing here for us is an example of the worst kind of division that Jesus brings. The big split of close, intimate family ties. But Jesus says his gospel, when spoken and taught in truth, will split up and divide entire families. It will set unbelieving members against those who truly believe. You see, when we speak God's law in truth, even to those near and dear to us, and tell them that they are guilty of sin, we do it for one purpose. We do it for the loving purpose of bringing them to repentance. But sometimes it will be rejected. Sometimes it will bring anger. Sometimes it causes division. So while the father who believes in Jesus as his savior certainly loves his son, he will find himself divided from his son if his son stands rebellious and unrepentant in his sins. So it is with mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. And this division is painful. <laughs> Trust me, it is. It is painful to have your son, your daughter, your brother, your friend insult you, revile you, despise you for telling them the truth of God to bring them to repentance so they can be saved for all eternity. But friends, no matter the pain, no matter the difficulty, if you love and trust in Jesus, you must be unwavering in your faith. There is too much at stake. And while no Christian wants to see family members leave the faith, neglect the faith, or ever see their own son or daughter, brother, sister, mother, or father die eternally in their sins, there is only one Savior. And he tells us that in order to receive his gift of eternal life, we must confess our sins, turn away from them, and ask Jesus to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
because he is the way and he is the truth and he alone justifies us, makes us right and pure and sinless before God. Knowing and trusting in this truth causes division even within our own families. My dear little Central Lutheran flock, I am so happy you are here today. And to anyone who may be listening online at this moment, I am so glad that the Holy Spirit led you to this place. But it's vital for me as a called servant of Christ to tell you that if you do not know the Lord Jesus, if Christ is not alive within you at this moment, if you have not been born again in him, you are still dead in your sins and you are not saved. And even if you have a knowledge of the existence of God or you are a decent moral person who knows right from wrong, even if you have read the Bible and have general knowledge of the scriptures, you must understand that you are made right before God only through your acceptance and complete trust in what Jesus did for you on the cross. So for you to be saved for all eternity, you must be in full agreement with the Bible's message that God will only give his gift of everlasting life to you if you confess your sins to him and you truly believe and trust in the bloody baptism that Jesus endured on the cross for your sins. But loved ones, this is not something hard to grasp or understand. We have a historical Christ. The object of our Christian faith is a real person who walked this earth. Jesus is not some made-up fairy tale character. The ministry of Christ is recorded in history. All of the characters of the Bible story can be verified. Jesus died on the cross and rose again from the grave, validating his authenticity. How do we know this happened? because it was recorded by eyewitnesses. And these eyewitness accounts are given to you and me to know the truth. So you don't have to go through life believing in some made-up Jesus. You don't have to have some blind faith of the will. You don't need to struggle with Christianity. You simply trust in all of the evidence given to us about the historic Christ who was here, who came back from the dead, and who ate some bread. And the moment you allow the Holy Spirit through the Word of God to bring you to faith in this historical, empirical, objective truth, you will know that Jesus Christ is your Lord who has redeemed you, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won you from your sins and from eternal death because of what he alone did for you on the cross. But your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it will cause division. Letting the Holy Spirit use you as a disciple of Christ, sharing his gospel, will cause division even among your best friends, your children, and your family. But people loved by God, <laughs> there is nothing more important in all of life than knowing Christ personally through his wonderful gospel. So let Jesus be your redeemer. Let Jesus be your savior. And even though this world will be divided and split until he returns, your knowledge, your acceptance, and your trusting faith in him will give you the real and only peace for the human heart and give you God's wonderful gift of everlasting life. Glorious Heavenly Father, 
Thank you, Father, for your words today. Allow the Holy Spirit now to open all hearts and minds who need to hear this word and let it penetrate deep within them so they can change who they are and come back to you. Father, your word is so powerful. The law shows us our sin, but the gospel shows us our Savior. And what a Savior we have. He loved us so much that he gave his very life on the cross to save me. Thank you for sending Jesus to do just that. In his name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen.